Hey everybody, welcome to Zine Cuisine. Today we have Francesca Lynn, who is a zine, zine cuisine star, and we love you. Um, so without much further ado, I want to ask the hot question. What are some of your favorite zines? Oh my gosh, I um I have some here to show off. I hope I can I hope people can see them. I just picked kind of a few from my collection. A lot of them I've gotten um, over the years. Um, most of them from the Small Press Expo. Um, just from like going and like now helping organize it and all of that stuff. And some are like ones just from like friends. So first ones I wanted to show off are um, both by Miranda Harmon. Um, and they these are both kind of, let's see, this one. This one I really like, One Weird Trick, if you can see it. Um, it's very Miranda-style character design within it. Um, and it's like, it's like amazingly cute, um, but also about kind of like being like, like learning how to be your own friend. Um, it's like this bear that pulls out um like learns how to pull out his like skeleton from his body and like and like play around with the skeleton and i don't know it's just like really i don't know it's really like heartwarming to me um like really really cool yeah and this other one where where do you go at night is more of like an autobiographical zine but i love it because her stories are like of her but that she usually represents herself like as almost like this like little character, and so it's slightly like surreal. So they're um, like these little animal characters that kind of just hang out with her, or sometimes she is an animal. I'm trying to find a good representative one, like this one about grocery shopping. It's like yeah, it's yeah, it's so amazing. Um, another one that I really like is your black friend. Um, so I have the zine version, well, I guess like the short, shorter thing version of this, and I have like the hard um, back version that has like a couple other stories in it. But um, this is one that I've taught like in my classes before, as well as shown them the like kind of animated version. And um, yeah, and that, this is like by Ben Passmore. Um, the SPX. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's like really great. Um, the ones, um, the ones that I just mentioned by Miranda, I think are both like self-published ones. Um, this one was put out by Silver Sprocket, which I really love, like everything, like Silver Sprocket puts out like so many cool, like comics and patches and all sorts of stuff. That's, that's like a really neat bunch. Um, I'm trying to think of what other things I brought. I have like a huge stack of zines in my house. Um, one of my, probably, <laughs> yeah, my favorite I think my favorite cartoonist um, making stuff right now in the world um, probably is Whit Taylor. I love Whit Taylor. I have everything she's ever done. Um, but one of the, some of the favorites I've had is Wallpaper, this like really little tiny one that's like super different. It's like a super different one. I don't even know if you'd like call it like a comic per se, but it's one that's a story it's a story that's told through like patterns in uh, patterns around the main character's life. Oh, and that's so cool. it's really cool. And so it's just kind of like this short, like slice of life moment thing about like growing up also about like, just like kind of just everyday patterns, but it really like made me like think about, and it's also so small that I think it's like, it really works with kind of like the subject matter. It's so like precious feeling. So I really, really like this one. Um, yeah, I actually have like more than one copy of this because I was like such a fan. Um, and then this one I think is one of the ones that I saw that like really like got my attention from Whit Taylor like way back in the day. Um, this one, which is called if people can't read it, it's called Watermelon and other thing that makes other things that make me uncomfortable as a black person. So it's kind of these short vignettes about um, stereotypes and, it, and somewhat awkward encounters um, and also kind of an educational thing about like race and racism that I, I just, I don't know, I think it's really, really great um, comic, like a, maybe an earlier one by 
um, her, yeah, this is this one came out in like 2011. Um, and so, yeah, it touches on it touches on things like stereotypes of things that black people like, and also like how awkward it is if you do like that thing and you're black but like like there's a like a, like a moment where she just like wants to order like a watermelon flavored IPA beer and it's like uh should I what what do I do? yeah what do I do yeah. and kind of the history somewhat of the history behind like things like watermelon I don't know she's like really gifted I think with dialogue and um I don't know I think her work is just phenomenal so that, those are some of my like two of my like faves out of it, but like anything she um, she's created, like I have or I've, I've read or I recommend. She's done a lot of comics for the Nib and like um, a couple for the New Yorker too. So you should really, if you haven't, check her I out. Definitely yeah. Have to. Oh my gosh, she's amazing. She just had a baby. Um, <laughs> it's so exciting. Yeah, it's so exciting. Like I'm just so excited for her. She's wonderful. Um, and then last, oh, I have a couple more, last but not least, of kind of more of the cartoony type things, um, or I mean, comic-y type things, is um, Beth Barnett's Hello Space Boy. I'm such a fan of this. Um, so I know that you had Beth on Zine Cuisine already, so it's super cool. I recently had Beth talking to my uh, queer comics um, class, which is an upper level class in the gender studies department over at VCU. And she was mostly talking about um, like making the COVID-19 comics that um, called social distancing that are up right now and also talking about making memoir in general. Um, and it was awesome to get to talk to um, talk to Beth and have like so much like like I don't know undivided time. All of my students um, had so many questions that we got to ask and so it's really, really cool. Um, yeah, and it was amazing. Uh, but this one I think is super, super cool because it's kind of talking about your identity through like maybe a favorite, a favorite like kind of iconic musician. So it's all about kind of the connections between like David Bowie and how pivotal someone like David Bowie was to like finding an identity. I like, I love stories like that. It's really cool. It kind of reminded me a little bit of some of um, Hazel Newlevin's stuff around, like their stuff around Prince. Like yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Same kind of, I love, yeah. I love kind of the, those kind of explorations. It's super cool. It's yeah. Like the, uh, one part like per zine and uh, cause a lot of the uh, zinesters um, now coming up are also comic artists. So it's a, like one part per zine, but one part illustrated comic zine, which is really a great, a great uh, like combination. Yeah, and I just love, I love the, like the limited color palette that's going on here. Like it's really, really cool. It's a really nice, like I think two contrasts from like the cover. Uh, and so yeah, it's really, really good. Um, Beth, Beth Barnett, like anything, I think is just like anything, um, she does is golden. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah. And I think this is also another one that was self-published. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Which is super dope. And then I have some other ones that are just like real special to me. Um, so this one is from one of my, um, one of my former students actually is a poet and writer and has created like all of these like really cool things. And I have uh, one of her like poetry zines and it's awesome. I believe I got this um, at the Richmond Zine Fest one year. I think that was probably a couple years ago now, um, but the poems in it are like, uh, it's like a shorter, it's a shorter like poetry zine. The, the poems are, are like accompanied by some like imagery. And like, I just, I loved, I loved like this page. Um, if people can't, I'm going to read it. If people can't see it through this video. Um, but it says, it's like the, an image of a phone, like a smartphone. And it says your, uh, your hashtag MCM, like your man crush Monday judges fat girls for getting more than one item at Starbucks, but thinks it's quirky when thin girls have frappuccinos and cookies for breakfast. And, um, and it, that just like encapsulated, I think like 
Delaney's like Delaney has like this biting wit and is just like a smart, like smart, quick person. And like I think a lot of um, her writing just has that in it. And I was just like, you go, Delaney. Like it's so exciting to see. I think. Let me see when this one came out. Yeah, you can find. I'm not sure if she's like putting out more of these zines um, right now. And, um, but I know that, um, like, you can follow her on Twitter at Original Delaney. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, she is fantastic. She, I remember, it's, it's like, she was someone who, like, really talked about, like, the how much she loved this movie, like, The Kingsman. Have you seen that sure. movie? Yeah, with Colin Firth and ever. And I, I love that movie, too, but I never met someone who, like, she had seen it, like, something like I think it even says it on the scenes yeah she like she'd seen it like more than 50 times and like knew like all the stuff about it and like created this whole project around it that was like really really great um it's, it was really neat she's a, such a super smart person so I could like gush about some of my former students like all day because they're amazing um and then the last one I had which is by a um by a like car by a cartoonist, by someone who makes comics, but is more of an illustrated, it even says like an illustrated story. Um, I need to maybe get better lighting up on in here because I know this is harder to see, but it's um, a, a little tiny like scene um, called Not So Butch by Mari Naomi. And it's like the story of a relationship. And I hadn't read like a ton of stuff, um, I think at the time that was, um, like made by women who are like bisexual mm -hmm. and like this one is just kind of about um, about like bisexuality talking to uh, talking to a lady that you like and how it kind of worked out um, and I think Marie Naomi like writes the best about relationships like uh, like all of her like comics that discuss them I think are so fascinating and just like sensitive and insightful like um like kiss and tell I think was the first thing I ever uh, read by her and that's all about like a romantic like resume basically it's like her just everyone she's dated and all of these different people I need to get that <laughs> it's so good it's so good and then she also did um Turning Japanese, which I think is one of my, that's probably one of my favorite memoir books, books of all time, because that's about her like kind of journey from, um, she decided, she decided she wanted to be like a, a hostess at a, like a Japanese hostess in Japan, like at one of those hostess bars. Um, and she also did that like in California. So it's an interesting story about, I think a, a segment of culture that we don't maybe know about as much, particularly if we're like based in North America, um, because we don't really have that as much. Like there are some in California, I think it's some in New York, but in Japan, there's like this long culture of like being a host at these hostess bars. And it's a very like kind of maybe thing that we're not as close uh, we're not as used to talking about um but also she went over there with her boyfriend at the time so it's also like about their relationship like what was he doing at the time and i think that is so cool and so interesting and it's also like about her own personal I identity because she wasn't someone who really grew up speaking a ton of japanese and maybe resisted learning japanese when she was a child and then going over there and like trying to learn japanese so it's like language and identity and culture are all mixed together and it's also like a story of like all of these like some good interactions but some skeezy interactions with like these men too so it's like all of those things yeah i love that book yeah <laughs> yeah it's so great so those are like some of my favorite ones that i had um i think that there's so there's like i could talk about this kind of stuff all day though there's like so many pe good people <laughs> putting out like comics and zines or self-publishing things like um like I'm, i can't even like even like some of the people that are putting out stuff um just through kickstarter like it's like it's insane it's like it's absolutely bonkers how many good comics there are out there or just good zines that are out there i want to get more into like looking at things that are maybe not comic based zines like i'm fascinated by people who are doing other th other things with zines um i don't like have a, a ton of those so 
Like it's cool. Like what kinds are you looking for? You're looking for I like love really things or I love like perzines and that kind of thing. Like I think that that's awesome. Um, a lot of the things that I read in general are just memoirs um, of all different kinds. So I think that that's super, like, that's just always been super interesting to me. Like, any kind of memoirs, too. I'm, like, um, I'm like not a snob about it. And, like, I really want to get the next book is that's on my list. is like, Jessica Simpson's autobiography that just came out that, like, I hear is, like, amazing. And because it's, like, it's super long and she, like, names names and she goes in on it and I think that that's super interesting to me because she's someone that I probably didn't take seriously when she was in her like heyday in like the 2000s but she talks about like her addiction and recovery and a lot about like the way that maybe she was like promoted as a sex symbol before she ever really knew what that meant and like all of this other other things that I think are really like really really interesting and like important because I think we sometimes we throw away these, it's easy to like, be like, well, you had everything because you were this hot blonde lady on top of the world. But it was like, oh, like no one was like looking out for her at the time, really, you know, like who had her back? Like she could have maybe just like ended up being another tragedy story had like not the few friends that she had that really had her back, like stage an intervention at one point, you know, like it was like easy. It makes me think of like someone like Britney Spears too, which I was like, I remember yeah. like, being like in middle school and like hating her and not really knowing why. And a lot of that, I think it was like, like misogynistic comments that I just was like, Oh yeah, I'm not going to be like that. And it was just like, what? It, like now you look back on it. It's like, well, why were, why was this okay? Like, why was this okay yeah, for people? Going, she's going through some major stuff with I like know. her dad and being her like a uh, guardian. And she's like, what? I'm 30, I'm almost 39. She's about my age. And I'm like, yeah, she's around that age now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, it's, it's, me. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting to see like what's going to happen. And hopefully she comes out on the other side. But yeah, those are like kind of like the big pop related examples. But I just like, I love hearing people's like personal stories and things. That's like one of the reasons why I think I love just memoir comics in general. I have a bunch of, um, I think um, I always look forward to um, whenever she collects it. Um, Gabrielle Bell, one of my favorite cartoonists of all time tends to publish like a uh, like uh she does like one comic a day for the month of, month of July um July diary and so i ha i think i have like most of her july diaries if she's put it out like i love those um because they're just so like they're like rough and sometimes like a little bit wiggly in her lines but it's so interesting to see what she does with it every single month like they start to get Sometimes they start to get like surreal and just like very strange. I really, really love that and appreciate those kind of work. Cool. Yeah. So I don't think everybody generally knows. Um, what do you do for a living? Okay, you, so, you anything, but I don't think everybody knows. Yeah, so I am currently a professor at um, Virginia Commonwealth University. And so I teach over in the department of um, women and gender studies so yeah i am um i teach three classes three um I, well i teach four classes actually i teach three classes in um intro to gender studies which is um the entry level class that everyone can kind of take it gives like a really broad kind of look at like what is gender studies? What is feminism? Like, what is um, what is racism even? Like things that we're talking about that like affect kind of everyone's lives. Like what are all those things? Like what are the major concerns? A little bit of like the history of maybe movements like the feminist movement, but also like a lot of contemporary readings of like, oh yeah, what is, sometimes you hear people tossing around phrases like intersectional feminism. And then it's like, well, what is that? Like, what? Why are people talking about this? Is this like a new thing? No, it's not. Um, but what? Um, but what does all that mean? And then also, it has like different kind of like different units on things that affect like media and culture is my thing thing that I really love. Um, so we talk a lot about that. But it also talks. We also talk about things like health disparities. Like, are there gendered um, differences in the way healthcare is? applied and yes there are so we talk a lot about those kind of things too 
Um, I also um, teach every semester an upper level class um, in the gender studies department. Um, my area, one of my areas of specialty is comics. So those comics, those classes tend to center around comics. Um, this semester, the class is on quite broadly queer comics. So we read a lot of, um, we tried to um, center like the queer experience, um, both real and imaginary. Um, in our class. So we looked at um, comics by uh, Melanie Gilman. We looked at comics by Tilly Walden. Um, we looked at, um, you know, uh, Beth, um, Beth Barnett's like very, very briefly, we kind of looked at some of those things. We even kind of extended that to look at, um, we read um, the Harley Quinn Breaking Glass um, by Mariko Tamaki, um, which even though Harley Quinn is not really um, like a queer character within that book per se, there's a lot of, um, discourse in that book around like kind of creating a like a found family a, a found queer family with that when that because she kind of lands upon a family that is all kind of immersed in kind of the dragon ball culture um and also we can think of harley quinn i would argue that harley quinn is like a queer character um even though they don't explicitly say that in that book and kind of maybe some of her like on screen versions have certainly not been queered, but like within kind of, if you read comics, you know, kind of the Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy romance has been a big deal for a long time now in the comics. I shit that, I shit that hard. You know, I just I have to say, I know this is off topic. I have to say, I love Poison Ivy. Like Poison Ivy is my like end all be all. I think one, if people ask me sometimes, like, if you were to write a comic, like, who would you write? Like, who would you want to? I'm like, a hundred percent, like a weird, but I would do like a weird Poison Ivy comic. Like she would be like this, um, which she's been represented like this before, like more of an eco-terrorist, but also like a weird, like kind of going on like body horror swamp thing, Poison Ivy. Like that's like where I would go, oh, I love her so much. Like someone, one day someone will let me write like a, an, a like a strange issue on her. Um, yeah, that's, cause to me, that's what I like the character makes so much more sense. It if she's like this weird body horror, also like woman of color. Like I always thought that that, that would work as like kind of a decolonial version of Poison Ivy. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that, that's my that's my dream. And they kind of do it, which is exciting to see. They kind of do it in Breaking Glass. I don't want to spoiler, because that book is not that, that book came out pretty recently, but like the Ivy character in the Breaking Glass graphic novel, like you, is definitely like a woman of color, but they kind of make her like, not the IV that is Pamela Isley. So it's it'd be interesting. I would like the Pamela Isley to maybe be like a woman of color. And, but I know that uh, that probably would annoy a lot of people, but I don't care. Uh <laughs> I hate when people get annoyed over things like, you know, Oh, Thor is a woman. And why, why is um, Spider-Man black now? Like <laughs> that's how these things, you know, things evolve, you know, yeah. I mean, representation matters. Yeah. And the thing with a Poison Ivy <laughs> character, too, because I've thought about this, because I'm like, she could even be a white passing woman of color. And that's even maybe like an interesting biography point, because she's on one hand, she's like the scientist, but she's also a femme fatale. And I was like, but what if maybe she like, you know, is kind of like an espionage character that's like trying to protect some sort of like maybe cultural homeland or something like that like i've i've thought i've spent so much time thinking about this that's like my i would write fan fiction about her if i had time to write fan fiction i'm such a nerd yeah i know i love her um I love her. <laughs> yeah i love her poison i was so good um yeah, I'm trying to think of other zine stuff. I'm just like such a fan. Um, I like talk to you to zines. I think I started looking at zines. Um, I knew about them vaguely when I was still in high school, but there wasn't really like a place to get zines in suburban South Florida that I knew. I'm sure there were. I didn't know about it. Like I was like just like a kid that went to the mall. Um, it's like, you know, I just like, there wasn't like that kind of thing anywhere when I was, and I kind of knew about zines a little bit more when I was in high school through like things like music, like things like real, like record stores and stuff. When I started getting into, like, I knew that there were people doing those kind of, those kind of things. And I even made a zine back in the day. Like, I remember I made one and I just like gave it to my friends and it was called Ophelia Swim Team. 
which is super emo, like such a super emo thing to do. And then I made like a blog based on it that I had for like years, but that does not exist anymore. So funny. It was just like, uh, it was just like a, basically like a live journal, but on a blog. Like it was just like, this is what happened. Yeah. Um, but then I really got more into zines when I was in college and then like um, doing art in college because there was more um, Gainesville, Florida, at University of Florida. Um, yeah. I'm from Ocala. <laughs> oh, really? That's, I yeah. did not know that. So like, yeah, go Gators. Um, but I, I like, I went and I visited with a friend at the, this place called the Civic Media Center, which is kind of like a, like an alternative. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's like an alternative library and like meeting space and all sorts of, and they have like a zine library there. And so I went there with a friend and I also went back um, with art classes because they, they have like this really cool collection of zines that are there. There's so, like so many of them. And so that's how I kind of learned about that. But then I didn't learn more about comics until um, like these kind of like, I don't know, super cool self-published comics until like kind of later when I started like rediscovering comics as like, you know, more of an adult, which I think is maybe more common with, um, not to generalize too much, more common with women than for men. Maybe it's changed now, but like I remember liking comics as a kid and then kind of like falling out and not really liking them as like a teen. But then in my 20s, um, probably like 19 to like 22, I started getting into more of like, um, you know, like art comics or alternative comics of some sort. And like, cause there were more things that were maybe like written, like stories that I was like more interested in, like things that are about like everyday life that I wanted to read about. And then I kind of got into that. And then that kind of got me back into like zines and things. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I just, they just like make me so happy and exciting. Like I've done, I've created my own like s small short things, um, but I, I would love to like make more, more zine related materials, like put something out. Yeah, it'd be so cool. Well, yeah. I think you should totally put some zines out because I mean, I got to know you through, um, through Skelly. Yeah. With that, um, that wonderful show that was, one of my favorites. Oh, um, yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was, it was so fun to do. Comic Starts Richmond, and we want to do it again. We don't know when we're going to do it again now because of how everything is going, but we definitely want to do it again. It was a success. Um, I feel like people had a good time, and we want to do, like, more comics-related, zine-related things in the future. Yeah, Skelly is incredible. Um, she's so talented, and um, I would love to in one day collaborate with her in the future. Um, right now, I know um, her work is um, like other people. I think, I think some of us are going through this where a lot of people are like, I have nothing to do, I'm just at home, and like my work is load is like kind of tripled, and I know that her workload is been like a lot more too like it's just certain industries like having to move everything online and work with students online it um I'm happy to do it but it just takes more time than like meeting with them in person would would um just recording things to send to them is like I'm I don't know I'm not the best with video recording so um I fine yeah I want to yeah I definitely want to work with her again she has a lot of cool stuff going out and just like the way that she she draws like a dream it's amazing yeah it's so cool yeah I love I yeah I, I love that show I, I hope I hope we can do another one because that was I a think blast. I think we um, definitely I just, will I love the whole we're like Richmond um zine fest that I had been part of because I think oh, it's yes. been like that I've done in this past year and I'm like I want to do more yeah the zine Richmond zine fest I think is fantastic they've done that's one of the um we really kind of um and we reached out to them when we were going to do a comics thing just to like get advice and to see what they thought about starting something like that. The people that do Zine Fest, I know Selena Williams um, pretty well. Um, sh fantastic, like they're amazing people. It's always like super affordable, super accessible. They always have things like, a, this. they have something that I would like to do eventually, which is have like a day of programming, like they have panels and they have not only panels, but workshops of things that people can kind of like, you know, learn how to do something um, and up their skills. I think it's super, super important. And it's nice because uh, I don't know, I just like, there's something so like affirming and cool about seeing like, 
you know, you can come out there and you can spend a bunch of money, um, but it's not that much money, but you can get all of this cool reading material from people that are creating it themselves and like it goes directly to that person and they're not paying like a huge table fee. Yeah, that's one thing that um, I know is gonna be really important kind of going forward. It's like um, a lot of people right now are losing so much money because they're not gonna be able to show and it's like, how are we going to recover from some of this? Like, it's really, it's really like kind of hard to kind of say what's going to happen in the future now. Cause we don't know, like, we don't know when things are going to really reopen. Are people going to feel safe to come to things that are crowded? Like, are people going to be like, where, like, honestly, like everyone just needs more money. Like too, like, I don't know. The stimulus check is, is it's great that we're getting a stimulus check. I'm not discounting that, but like, that's not going to really go very hard, very far. if People are completely out of work, you know? Yeah. I'm fortunate. Um, David is a government employee for the DMV. So the call center, they're, they're working. Yeah. They, they have no other choice but to work. They're sending some of them home so they can have more space in the office to keep space. Sure. But I'm a cook. I have yeah. no choice but to work with the public. And we're doing all to go. We're busy. Yeah. And I, I've been working six days a week. And I kind of want a little time off of this point. Yeah, um, my podcast partner, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my podcast partner, um, Tom Hall is a chef, he's a cook, he's been doing that like his for a really long time now. Um, and and he was saying, like, the last time I talked to him, his first day off that was like his first day off that he'd have after working like 16 days in a row, um, because it's busier there for him in a lot of ways. Um, for a lot of different reasons. And I mean, it's great because we want people to be supporting the restaurants. I don't want any of the restaurants to close. We have such a good restaurant, a great restaurant um, town. So I don't know if people are watching this and if you are in a place where you have restaurants that you love, make sure you're ordering stuff and getting it to pick up. And also please try and get it. If you can get it to pick up and um, not use some of the meal delivery apps, go ahead and do that so all of the money gets to the restaurant rather than kind of the cut. Um, I mean, of course, if you have to use delivery and they don't have local delivery, like do that because it's better than nothing. But like, it's so important to try and support. Like in Virginia now we have, um, you can get mixed drinks to go. Yeah. You can get cocktails to go. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I was like what? Yeah. Okay, you can get so like, yeah, pictures of yeah, people are ordering pictures of mimosas and stuff, and I was like, okay, well, I might have to do that, or I might have to tell people like my birthday is coming up soon, and I'll be like, y'all can just like order things and just leave them on the porch for me, like. <laughs> yeah, we're still under this order in Virginia until what June? June. June. My birthday. I'm turning thirty nine this year, and I'm like. Well, looks like I'm going to be doing some stuff at home. <laughs> I think, yeah, because I forget you're also a May birthday. So we're in the same boat. We're, yeah, I guess we're doing just me and the dog and um, my boyfriend. <laughs> so me I and hope, our, our forest. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I feel a little, I have to admit, I know this is not about zines, but I have to admit, I feel a little bad for my boyfriend because he's getting the full energy of me on my birthday wanting to have a birthday and like he is not like a huge like he's he's not going to make a big deal about his birthday really but I'm just like what am I going to do as a party it still has to be a party like I'm I feel like I've become a monster I'm like I've already decided it should have a theme um I hope that people oh, are ready to like live stream we're gonna we can zoom in all day yeah I really want to do a, like, a, I, I like to go on trips. Like, I like to go somewhere, somewhere else, like, you know, go to Charlotte or something, and we can't go anywhere, and <sighs> <laughs> I can't go anywhere. I don't, I'm like, all the cons are canceled, and Zine Fest, and I'm like, what do I, it literally has taken me about three weeks to get my mental stuff back together so I can even put episodes back on because honestly I, I kind of slumped into this weird like 
why am I even bothering making anything if it's not really going anywhere kind of depression? And I'm like, oh. It's a bummer, right? It's, I think a lot of us, yeah. I realize, and I'm glad I know this about myself now, I realize that I'm kind of an, I'm like an extrovert. I'm I'm not a super loud extrovert, but it's just like, I'm just like, I miss people. And it also starts to maybe challenge some of the things, like the, some of the things that I think I get my identity from, I can't do anymore. It's like, people are like, oh, it's great. At least you don't have to go in to teach. And I'm like, the lecturing part of teaching and talking to students is the best part for me for teaching. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. I'm just here looking at papers and grading them. Like, I like reading their work, but it's like, I can't even really, like, talk to them about it in the same way. And so, uh, yeah, and just like things like comedy, there's no no stand up comedy. And I mean, you can try and do people have been doing really cool things on on, like Instagram Live or doing kind of their own shows, which are really neat. So like home brewed comedy shows instead of watching on TV. Um, But I realized that like there's there's no replacing a live audience. So you can't really do your stand up routine to like a Zoom crowd. And, it's not the same. And like, especially if they all have their mics muted and you're just talking to, even just lecturing, I was like, this is weird because you kind of, you say something and you wait for like maybe some sort of like recognition and it's just like a bunch of little boxes looking at you and you're like, okay, this is weird. Yeah. So it's a different, it's we a have, different thing. Our friends did um, some concerts online and um, one of our friends is like a definite storyteller and musician, Chesky Ramos. And he definitely feeds off of the energy of the crowd. Mm-hmm. So he's had a hard time with this. I can tell like he is not enjoying it. He's doing it because it's a way for, you know, to share and all that. But sure. he gets so much energy, like going into the audience and playing the guitar and singing his stories that we just kind of like, I, I feel bad for him because like, he gets that. I mean, the same thing with comedy and even with teaching, you get the energy from your, from your crowd and you play off of it. I mean, that's a, I did improv and um, theater for a long time. I, I don't think I could just do like a, a monologue or a story and have people just like looking at your little boxes. I don't know how I, I YouTube yeah. is one thing. I know what I'm doing with YouTube, but not having an audience for something that's very audience participation is kind of like uh weird (laughs) yeah i definitely saw like a meme that was going around because a lot of my friends are based in um improv um and it just said like check on your improv friends they are not okay (laughs) and like (laughs) and i said i just like feel bad for like everyone um everyone who has a partner that is not in comedy um, with a partner that is in comedy. Cause it's like, congratulations. Now you have to start a podcast. <laughs> Cause that's kind of what's, what's I've seen is happening. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky enough that um, at least um, my boyfriend understands we, we do not really want to work together on projects a lot of the time, but he at least understands like my impulses and wanting to do things. So he actually helped me do stuff like set up my YouTube channel for my classes that I'm going to be putting, but it's not now not just going to be about my classes. It's going to put up some more content that's educational, but like for everyone, if you're just at home and you can watch things about kind of subjects I'm interested in. Yeah. So that's been fun. (laughs) Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so where do you see the future of zines? I think, um, I see, I honestly see more and more. Um, I don't see, I think sometimes people are worried that like this, like having physical zines are on the decline. I actually see maybe like that increasing. I see like a resurgence of people being really, really, really like um, interested in like handmade materiality. 
um, or like just like having a physical object. I think as we're going further away from having papers, having physical things, these like zines are becoming more and more, um, and I don't really love the word precious because that maybe like implies that they're gonna be like untouched and like revered in a certain way. And I mean, a zine is meant to be like kind of handed and given to friends and spread out in the world. But I think that um, especially with younger people that maybe don't have as much of a history with zines, they seem to like really gravitate towards them and think that there's something really important probably because they're not seeing as many like pieces of paper and pamphlets and things anymore in other areas. Um, so we Everything do, so yeah, um, which is great, I think, um, from maybe an environmental perspective, but like, I don't think like, z the, the impact of zines and paper is not really what, what we need to be reducing for consumption at all. Um, it's such a small area, um, but, um, I do like a reading on zines and like what zines um, meant for, especially like for feminist girl zines in what, in my intro class. And more and more people, like when I ask them, like, have you seen a zine before? Like, have you, and more and more, like it's a very few people that are like, yeah, um, I've seen this. But once they like read it and they know that it exists, um, they are, like captivated by this idea that there is zine fest, there are people that are doing this and they think it's like really, really important. And I think, I think that's really cool. There's some, cause I think that we maybe discount this like tactile nature, like actually flipping through pages, actually having things like a lot of cool zines, like, you know, that work on the materiality of it, that pick different papers or the way that it's printed. I think we can kind of see that with even like the resurgence and kind of, enduring popularity of like risograph things because risograph has a very particular handmade look right or like the way that people love okay. silk screens like I don't I don't see it like really like like just like being like oh this is a thing in the past we'll just have all easings I don't think so I think people are more and more like being like oh this is a this is like a thing that you made like and they're they're just really excited to share like this like oh that someone made something with their hands and I think that's really cool yeah I love I love zines I love the fact that there's like um the uh science zine collective which is a uh, free website um uh, and there's a bunch of science-based one page zines that are free to, to print and distribute. Oh, that's and cool. I didn't know about that. I'll put a link to it. Um, when we did the Maker Fair, Stephen and I did the Maker Fair two years in a row, and we taught about making a zine and a comic with the kids. Um, I had printed out gads of science zines, and they're like over every kind of different topic from like recycling and uh, water and where you get it. To, I think this one's called Endless Spirals, Army of Ants, and there's they're all free for you literally to print out and distribute, which I thought was great. There's so many free zines out there to do that, but it's still, there's a tactile about, you know, I could sit there and scroll through something online, but if I'm not sitting there and let's say I have one right here, picking up a zine, I like just looking at zines. I love the I love the feeling what kind of paper they use, and you're right, what kind of printing. It, it's it's a it's a love. <laughs> yeah, because I certainly don't think like we're not going to stop looking at screens any anytime soon, and I'm sure we're looking at more screens than we ever have before, like as people. But I think that people are like, oh, this is this is maybe a respite in some ways to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you for talking with me today. Oh my this gosh, is great. Thank you. And anytime you want to come on and talk about something, please do. I, I love hearing different histories and um, hearing presentations and sharing it with all of our fellow cuisine stars because Oh my gosh, I would love I would love to. That's so nice. Yeah, and that's so awesome. Yeah, I'd be really excited to talk about it. Yeah.